In this video, we're going to update the previous video on how to push your code to Heroku. Heroku is a great platform as a service to get your applications up and running quickly. And once you know how to actually push code to it and configure everything just right, it's actually quite simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is if you'll look, we're on the Heroku homepage for downloading the Heroku tool belt. We're gonna go ahead and go through that. We're gonna download it and we're gonna go ahead and install the command line tools so that we can actually start using them. Then we're going to jump over to the command line in our project and we're just going to do Heroku version and it's going to go ahead and install some updates for the packages that are kind of the difference between what was in the installed and what is out there as the latest. And then once it gets done with that, we're just going to do our Heroku version again to make sure we list out the version information without having to do any updates. Heroku is based around you having a Git repository and what you do is you push your Git repository to a remote that is on Heroku and it'll run through an installation process on their servers. So to start out, we need to add our code to a git repository. So we're just going to do a git init. That's going to create a .git file in our local directory. Then we're just going to add all of our files to the git repository and add an initial commit for a message. And then poof, we've just added a bunch of files. So now we're actually ready to create instance of our application on the Heroku servers. And to do that, we're going to do Heroku create. We're going to go ahead and log in with our login credentials if you haven't already done so. And then finally, once you're logged in, it's going to go ahead and create the app. Notice we have the obscure broke 4850.herokuapp.com. This is going to be the URL that we can access our test website on. And then the get.heroku.com is going to be the remote location for our Git repository. So we want to, you know, check out from that remote repository again, or we want to add it to a different instance of a repository that someone else has, we can do that. And we can see that that actually worked by doing a git remote hyphen v and you'll see we have a remote name of Heroku and we have that git repository listed. So the next thing we're going to do is let's actually go ahead and look at what it takes to be able to host our app on Heroku. I just did a start project on the app, did a manage.py start project, and then I added a Django app with a few models in there. In fact, as we'll see here in a minute, I didn't even modify the homepage that you land on just to keep something that's super basic and provide some example things to do. So the first thing that we're going to look at is we're we're going to look at our requirements.txt file. Note we have our Django 1.9. We have Django extensions. It's not required for Heroku. I just used it to create some models really quick. We're going to use Gunicorn to actually host our WSGI process. So we have that listed. We're going to use Postgres, which is the default database that you use with Heroku. And then the two key packages that we really want to pay attention to here is DJ database URL. DJ database URL is a package that was created to help with a 12 factor app configuration. And by using it and having Having it installed, it automatically grabs the configuration information from an environment variable and sets it for our Django app to use. And then finally, we have white noise. White noise is a package that lets you serve your static files through Python instead of serving it through something like Nginx, since that's, that kind of configuration isn't available to us with Heroku. However, it's actually not as inefficient as a lot of people might claim because it has really nice defaults to make it easy for your application to serve up static content. And we'll go over that in more detail in a follow-on video. So this is what we're going to install in our virtual environment is going to be on Heroku. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at our proc file. It's a capital P ROC file for our process. And we're going to give it a name of web colon and then we're going to use the Gunicorn binary that's installed in our virtual environment. And then we're going to use stats.wsgi. Stats is the name of our project and then WSGI is that WSGI.py file that's in the root of your project. And that's going to run everything accordingly like we need to to be able to host our Django application. Next, let's go ahead and look at runtime.txt. And here we're saying we're going to use Python 3.4.3. The official hosted version of Python that Heroku supports at this time is 3.5.1. I just did 3.4.3 as an example that you can use other versions of Python. They also support 2.7.9, if I recall correctly. So if you want to specify the version of Python, you just do that with a runtime.txt file. Our next file we'll look at is our settings file. Yay! Actually, the settings file isn't going to actually change a whole heck of a lot. In fact, all we're going to do is we're going to import DJ database URL here at the top, and that's going to take care of our database configuration stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and just jump all the way to the bottom. We're going to configure our static underscore root, and we're going to set our base dir to static files. And then we're going to set static URL to be slash static like we normally would. And then the key for our configuration system is the static file storage. We're going to say, hey, we're going to use white noise.django gzip manifest static file 
file storage. In a later video, I'll explain what all that actually does because it does quite a bit and makes it really efficient for serving up static files through your Python process. But that's what you need to configure your static files that you're going to upload to the server. And then the last file that we're going to actually look at is the WSGI file in our stats. So we're going to open up our stats, WSGI.py. Then we're going to import our Django white noise object from white noise Django so that we can actually let it process our static files. Then at the bottom, you would normally have application equals get WSGI application. However, we're going to reassign application to an instance of Django white noise and pass in the application. And that's going to do our bootstrapping of everything that we need for letting white noise serve out our static files to us. And that's it. That's all that we really need to be able to configure and run an application on Django on a very basic level. Depending on the setup you have, it could get more complex. To verify that we have everything actually set up file, you can actually run a command called Heroku Local Web, and it'll actually go ahead and run the project for you locally with the Gunicorn process. If we'll open it up in our browser and go to localhost 5000, which is the default for running it with our Heroku Local command, you'll see we have the, it worked, congratulations on your first Django powered page. So as you can see, I haven't customized that, so it kind of gives you a feel for how it goes. So now that we're done with that, we're actually ready to deploy this application to Heroku and start using it. First thing we're going to do is since we're using white noise to deal with our static files, we need to turn off the Django collect static. So we're going to set an environment variable with config colon set and then disable collect static equals to one. That just tells the system, hey, don't use the collect static command when we're doing a deploy. And then now for the magic, we'll do get push Heroku master, and this is going to push our master branch up to Heroku. Heroku is going to then see that and it's going to start doing a deploy process. If you look through here, you'll see that it detects that it's a Python application. It detects that it's using Python 3.4.3 and then proceeds to install all of our requirements into the virtual environment it's going to run on its end. And then finally, it's going to look in our proc file and figure out what needs to run. And then it's going to go ahead and deploy it to our URL and and poof, we're ready to go and look at that URL to see it working. So the final step that we need to do is since Heroku detected that it was a Django application, it automatically went and set up a Postgres database that is ready for us to use. It's not going to store a lot of data, I think 100 meg or so, maybe less, but it's there for us to go ahead and get started with. But we need to run our migrations on it. We can do that with a Heroku command on the command line. We'll just do Heroku run. This will run whatever command you type in after that on the Heroku server. And we'll just do python manage.py migrate. It runs all of our migrations on our database that it automatically configured for us. And there you go, we have our migrations run. The next step that we need to do is we need to actually be able to access our admin. So we're going to do Heroku run again, except we're going to run the create super user command. This will actually give us a standard in opportunity to go ahead and access, push in data through our command line tool. So we're going to give it a username and an email address and then we'll go ahead and try a password. Note, when we try to put in a simple password, we get this password is too common. This is the first sign that our Django 1.9 application is truly running and working. We'll go ahead and give it a little more complex of a password and we'll be done with that. Now let's just go ahead and jump into our browser. And if you'll look, you'll see in the address bar at the top that we're at our obscure broke 4850.herokuapp.com domain name. URL. So let's go ahead and jump into our admin to see that our database stuff is working. We're going to go ahead and log in. And there you see we have our authentication, our unauthorization app. We have our data app as well, or our sections for our models. And then the fact that we were able to log in shows that our database is actually working. And if we'll click on channels just to make sure we can go in there, you'll see it's ready for us to start adding in data. So that's it. That's all there is to configuring your application to be able to run on Heroku and then getting it actually up to Heroku. If this is something you're interested in, I really recommend giving it a shot because it'll actually save you a lot of time especially if all you want to do is just get something out there and have people start testing it. So with that, thank you for watching and have a great day.